A 16-year-old female smoker and social drinker is diagnosed with a secondary metastatic cancer of the lungs. Two months earlier, she was at the same hospital after still birthing a malformed fetus. What's the most likely cause of her cancer? In this case, the answer is C, incomplete hydatidiform mole resulting in choriocarcinoma. Let's discuss this by looking at some of the things that are important in a molar pregnancy. These are high yield um, points for your preparation in the USMLE. What is a hydatidiformal mole? Well, it's basically a malformed placenta, which happens as a result of abnormal fertilization. And there's two basic types. There's the partial mole, which results as an oocyte and two sperm or triploid sex chromosomes which would give you a, a chromosomal number of 69XXY. And this abnormal placenta will be uh, produced, and there'll be some fetal parts recognizable because there's both male and female sex chromosomes present. The placenta will typically be small, and it will um, be accompanied by vaginal bleeding, typically in the first trimester, and often will result in a spontaneous abortion. The second type of mole is known as a complete mole, and this occurs when there is no female pronucleus, although the nuclear material is the same because the haploid sperm has duplicated its nuclear material to make a 46XX, therefore all paternal material. The abnormal placenta is uh, present, but there is no fetal components. This oftentimes is... Um, accompanied by preeclampsia in that first trimester, has a very large uterine size uh, with very quick growth rates. And the bleeding is, from the vagina is fairly heavy, and there's very high levels of HCG. Um, one of the distinguishing features of these is that the placenta does not form proper villi, and they are... Um, kind of ball-shaped villi on the end, looking very vesiculated. And these oftentimes are what will continue on to become hyperinvasive, causing the choriocarcinoma. And that happens in about 2% of molar pregnancies. A question that will be a high yield is to understand how insulin-dependent diabetic mothers uh, during their first pregnancy will be concerned that they'll have an injection of insulin that will cause malformations. And as a, an astute physician, what would your advice to this person be about the insulin and how it relates to the blood placenta barrier? Hopefully, you'll recognize that insulin does not cross the placental barrier. This is an important point for you to know going into your boards uh, because there's a very high chance with uh, in diabetes being so prominent in the U.S. today that this is going to be a question that could be asked uh, on the boards.